Hello and welcome to the shipyard. Welcome back. If this is not your first time, if it's your first time, hello. Uh, we are uh, fans of Shippy TV uh, who decided to make a podcast talking about it. Will they want these? Slow burns, unresolved sexual tension, all the good stuff. Um, I am Dawn and this is Lucy. Hello. Uh, we uh, met via the uh, medium of the internet <laughs> and the TV show Pressure. <laughs> And, but we discovered we both had this uh, liking of uh, shippy shows in and in, um, in common. So we've been doing that. We have been taking a bit of a break because Lucy is doing her masters. Woo! We've nearly finished already. Two, where is that two years gone? Yeah, exactly. It's flown. It's gone so quickly. But you're nearly at the end now. The end is in sight. I've got two weeks left of my dissertation. Hopefully, once that's completed, we will be get back to more regular scheduled drops of, of podcasts and our blatherings, which I'm sure everybody is just yeah, dying we, for. Yeah, we will, because I've missed it, and if hopefully other people have as well, and if they haven't, then yeah, we enjoy doing it anyway. So Yes, we do it for ourselves. <laughs> if anybody else likes it, well, that's a bonus. Uh, so this, um, I won't say week, because goodness knows, you know, this edition yes edition thank you (laughs) we are uh having a little watch along to ted lasso now lucy and i both discovered ted lasso very recently we are latecomers i knew i would love it but i just didn't have the um access to it but now uh, i do (laughs) (laughs) now we both do Oh, the advantages of being a student. (laughs) Yes. And uh, we both binged it. I don't know what it is that it's like the whole car show thing again. It's just Mm. something about it. It's just addictive. It's just lovely. And yeah. And it's love. I also, I I used to live, I went to university in um, St. Margaret's, which is literally like four miles from Richmond. And I worked in Richmond for three years at Waitrose there. And so seeing, I know so many of the places that they go to, I'm like, oh yeah, that's, it's, yeah, it's weird seeing that on telly. <laughs> <laughs> Something I don't get to experience very often. <laughs> but um, yeah, Ted Lasso obviously is quite a shippy show in terms of there is the canon ship of Roy and Keely, which are currently broken up in season three, but I'm pretty sure they're endgame. Uh, yeah. There are all the bro ships of like uh, Roy and Jamie and Ted and Beard and all this, but um, the I think what has the biggest following online is Ted and Rebecca. Now, when I first started it, I was like, mm, I'm not sure I see yeah, it. Yeah, it's not blatant, but that's no. nice. I think it's like I just I think I mean it's not. I wouldn't even call it a slow burn. It was no. just they are just fantastic friends and if that is how it ends or what it ends on I wouldn't be disappointed no but if because it's not like apart from that scene last week when they're in the corridor yeah and they and they both walked away with very confused expressions on their face there's yeah. not been anything to blatantly encourage no. it I mean everything that they've done they said okay this is a really shitty moment I said, but it's actually just a really good friend moment yeah. it's like yeah if somebody was like, I knew having a panic attack, you'd go and support them. That's what friends do. It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean, oh, I'm in love with you. It's like, no, your friend's having a crisis. You're going to help them out. But if, so it's a very strange dynamic because normally the ones that we watch, it's really blatant how the mm-hmm. other person feels or you know there's that chemistry just bounces off the screen. And with this, it's not quite as in your face. Yes. But I, yeah, I, I just hope they both get their happy ending, though. I mean, or a happy ending. Yeah, it's just. I think, I think it's a slow burn for me. I, I don't. I don't mean a slow burn for them. You know what I mean? Is that yeah. I only, only in the sort of towards the end of the second series did I start to think, oh yeah, I can feel it. I can start yeah. to feel the. And but now in season three, I am feeling it more that I ship them. But like you say. I would be absolutely fine if they didn't get together. It's not one yeah. of those. It's it's not like car share where it's like, oh my god, why are you not two together? You're clearly in love. <laughs> not like that. It is as you say. It's just a really good friendship, and however they decide to play it, I think will work. But the I mean, Jason Sudeikis has said they are soulmates, 
Yeah. And they definitely have been playing with this idea since uh, season three when Rebecca goes to the um, psychic or medium, what we want to call her, that there is a predestination element to their... Yeah, so it's this whole thing about being upside down in water. I'm wondering if that's going to be in this episode that we're about to watch. I can't tell you because I know spoilers. <laughs> oh, you see, well, that's, you've ruined it. So we were supposed to be finding out, like, watching it together and being surprised. I know. It was the well, you can hear, listen to my genuine reaction. I am not a spoiler. Well, so, sometimes I am a spoiler fan. I'm... I didn't want to be spoiled with this. I wanted to just watch it cold, as yeah. it were. So, but. unfortunately, when I'm awake, it happens two in the morning. These things happen. <laughs> oh well, next time I'll. That's what, we'll I'll say. <laughs> what time does it drop? I'll set the alarm. <laughs> two a.m. You can wake up at two a.m. British time <laughs> and but, watch yeah. it then. So um, the other relationship in it that I really. I think it's just, it's equal as Ted and Rebecca, not in the shippy side of it, but I really want Ted and Nate's situation to be yeah. resolved. I really, really want them to end on a good note. I want, I yeah. don't want it to be that they, yeah. I, th- I think so. his redemption arc is starting. I thought it was such a good moment, was it not last week, the week before, after the game when Nate's being interviewed and he yeah. says, the interviewer says, you didn't shake Ted's hand. That was quite a, you know, a snub. And he was like, they're not and you know he didn't realize it and it's obviously he realizes the things that Ted ignored him were just yeah. oversights and they weren't deliberate so he's starting to realize that I assume yeah and I also think even the um the meal with Jade I think yeah last week I think she might bring that back out in him I think yes. if that is a route that that ends up going which I think it might be because yes. I like I I do love the callbacks yes. in Ted Lasso. Oh. I love the fact that I mean I didn't even realize if somebody pointed it out on Twitter. Is it in the com- in the episode last week where um, Rebecca's in the doctor's waiting room? Yeah, the couples that are in that waiting room were the couples that were in the cafe when she dumps John yeah. w- John Wings night, and yeah. I didn't even register that. I just thought that's genius. It's it's it went amazing. straight over my head. Luckily, these really observant mega fans are like paying attention because I didn't realize. <laughs> and I've, I don't even know how many times I've seen this show now. <laughs> and um but and yeah just like the whole like the Oklahoma thing and just yes little nods to previous I just think it's brilliant I think it's I, so well written I think maybe that's one of the things that makes it so appealing is and because fans love that stuff we love callbacks and showing that you remember everything you have written about these characters yeah. Because fans hate it. I mean, it's like in Friends. I think Ross had two different birthdays, you know. Yeah. People, if we are invested in your show, we want, we, we can also tell from this that they are invested. We don't want to show yeah. you just think, you're not paying attention, you're changing the canon halfway through. It's like, yeah. It do, it makes so much difference to the fans. And so it and it, it's, it's obvious in the quality as well. Yeah, and it, it's rewarding to fans because it's rewarding the fact that you've watched it, you know, eight times or whatever, and you notice these things. Mm. They're they're putting that stuff in as a reward for the people who pay that much attention. So it's 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 like a respect to the fans, saying, "Look, you know, we'll give you these things to thank you for how much attention you pay to our show." But I think it's also why people are going back and watching it again because yeah. when you watch it a second time, you think oh my god they just did that in that episode that yeah. I didn't realize and so people are going back and watching it just to get those moments or yeah. just to piece those bits together and that's really brilliant <laughs> it's like... yeah it really it really is it's just I think they're it's so skillfully put together they obviously knew the the story arc they wanted to do over three seasons so they had it all planned out and I think I think it's good when a show is doing that and not just sort of fumbling its way and going, hey, what will we write this season? You know, you yeah. can tell that crafted plot. And even though it doesn't seem like, oh, it's hugely significant plot. I, I know some people have felt that season three has stagnated a bit, but I think it is building uh, blocks, you know. Yeah, things. I think it's putting laying the groundwork. Yeah. It's, but no, or any other analogy of that same meaning is like... <laughs> Exactly. Any other building construction yeah, analogies just, you care for? Yeah, and I think 
I don't know. I, I, the other thing I love about it is I have to say when I the very first episode, when Keely rocks up, I thought, oh, she's going to be another stereotypical mm-hmm. footballer's wife, like, like um, characterization that it's like. But I think she's awesome, and the <laughs> friendships on this show oh. are just lovely. And but I, what I also love is that they even like the sassy and um, Rebecca friendship when they call, they call each other up on their shit, which yes. I think, do you know what? That's really refreshing. It's like when she said, when now Rebecca says, oh yeah, but um, I didn't, I wasn't in touch with you for six years because of um, Rupert. Rupert. And it was like, well, actually, no, you climbed that tower, but you you decided not to ring us. You did, that's on you. And it's like, yeah. Well, yeah. And it's well, really, it's honest. And yeah. you don't get that very often. I, and I was really pleased when Sassy showed up that episode when she came to the door at the hotel. I was like, oh no, she's going to be here and she's going to pit Keely and Rebecca against each other. She's going to be a, you know one of these evil friends. Yeah. That, but no, she's not. She's a really good person, a good friend. And, you know, and I thought that's so refreshing. Yeah, the only, I do, I love Katie Wicks. Yes. I just hope that she loosens up a bit that character because it's like fair <laughs> yeah. enough it's real fair enough it, you have to show every kind of type of character but I think yeah. she needs to kind of loosen up a bit <laughs> <laughs> I love her though and I, I miss her in ghosts <laughs> oh yeah I know it's sad uh, I, I think as well speaking of the supporting characters for me I think it's the epitome of why Ted Lasso is so good is Higgins because in, in another show he would just be this Humbling, officious, annoying person that is in scenes, but he's not. He was Maggie Smith's butler, wasn't he, in Downton Abbey? Yeah, and he is so well rounded as a character, and he is shown as the example of happy marriage. You know, he has a very yeah. happy marriage with his wife. He loves her so much, and they have kids. And, and again, them. that's really yeah. Brilliant. I mean, the only I think it's any the only other TV show where I think there's a really good example of a really strong marriage is um in Chicago Fire. There's Herman and his wife, mm. and they've got like five kids. They've been married for twenty five years, and I think and they still really care about each other. And it's like, but it's fiction. I know it's fiction, but you can believe them. Yes. It's like last week. There's a whole bit. I mean, I'm really got. It's a bit where Rebecca's in the um doctor's room, and she looks at the form it says emergency contact and she hesitates and I just thought yeah. that's brutally honest yes and yeah it's just heartbreaking at the same time but it's true and yeah I just sorry I'm a bit of a worshiper <laughs> <laughs> just it's so I know you know we're not saying that everybody has to like every show because it's all about taste you know and some there are some brilliant shows that I know are brilliant but are just not in my taste but I think Ted Lasso just appeals to me. I just like the hopefulness. I like the, yeah. you know, when I, I had assumed that the plot was that God, God, Ted, who is led, <laughs> Todd, Todd, who are God these people? <laughs> <laughs> Ted, I had assumed Ted was going to be a failed football coach. And that he'd come yeah. here as a kind of, you know, nothing else to do. And But the fact that he is good at what he does. And he, yeah. he is so good that he completely turns Rebecca's opinions around. Yeah, like, not not quite Chris Barry in the Business Empire, but kind of like, yeah. come over and be a characterisation, like a real bumbling yes. stereotype. But the fact that he's just... And he's also, you know, he's just really kind. And it's yes. like, you, he would never, you just don't think he would ever intentionally hurt anybody. And it's just no. like, it's nice to have, it's just refreshing. He's, it he's, really he's, is. he's a lead male. He's an alpha in his job, but he cares so much about people's emotions. And that is so refreshing to have as a male lead like that, whose entire being is about wanting everybody to be happy and, and, and genuinely wanting to make people happy and not just you know for his own ends or whatever but also I really respect the whole mental health storyline yeah yeah that is for somebody that for a male lead yeah to say and even in the speech he was saying last week we've all got our shit we've all got our demons yes to say do you know what it's okay not to be okay I mean it's been since lockdown it's every it's really become yeah 
a lot a huge a bigger much bigger focus but men I think even more so are still it's a still a reluctance and a stigma regards mental health I mean I've been there I mean my colleagues when I worked in London they didn't even ring me when I was off sick with depression you know because they didn't no. want to disturb me and it's like well that's not the way to go about it you know no. and it's like people need to be if somebody you know has got it you need to be treated so I think in the same way as saying it's okay it's okay to discuss it it's okay if you've got a problem to talk about it but also it shows people around you how you should react yeah around people that because yeah everybody can talk about their own you know they should be free to talk about their, their mental health yeah issues. I mean do you know what no do you know what? I'm not embarrassed about it it's it was shit it's happened more than once and I I hope it doesn't happen again I wouldn't be surprised if it did but hopefully it won't and I was what I was really glad when season three started and Dr. Sharon was still an occasional appearance because it showed like they were saying, you know, we haven't forgotten this. We're not just treating this as a one season story that Dr. Sharon is helping them all with their mental health and then that's uh, it. But you say that. I went back to the very first episode and when Ted is in the newsroom, he has he does the hand thing and the noise starts, and uh. that's episode one. Ah, oh, very good. Yeah. So it's this is good, like calling back to what we were saying earlier. The foundations are there. You just yeah. on a second. You, it's not obvious straight away, but when you go no. back in hindsight, you think that's genius. That is yeah. really well played. Yeah, yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the halfway point in the season. In what is yeah. a, presumably the last season. We'll just assume yeah. it is. So from what my the- understanding, it's called. Sunflowers, I believe. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And they've gone. They go on a jolly or like a friendly game in Amsterdam. That's, That's correct. As much as I know. Yeah. And I'm kind of wondering, is this going to be the episode where somehow Rebecca's upside down and wet and but happy, which I don't understand. <laughs> That's psychic. It's like fighting dining army. Yes. I can't even say exactly. It. <laughs> can't even say it wrong. <laughs> so so far in her prophecies, we've had the. Uh, green match book we'll come back to that the um shiting Shiting dining dining armor armor. and so we have um, we didn't get the results of what the doctor said i think we kind of know it looks like it was kind of a negative outcome but that we know that we know in tv land that doesn't necessarily mean that's true exactly so we shall um so there's still somebody said it because she said match book Yes. So, Ted, does Ted got a green matchbook? Well, this is what I was thinking: is that matchbook? And people were assuming a book of matches. I'm thinking, could it not be a book where you write about your matches that you have played and exactly. you need to take notes for strategies? So yeah. it could be Ted. It could be Beard. It could be Saint Crim. You know, a book, a green book that has notes about matches is a match. That's the English language. It <laughs> just loves me that. That's the one bit that sticks in my head from the first series. It's like, so what if what if you put cleats in the trunk? It's like you've got you've got the boot for putting boots in the boot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I have to say, mostly they get it spot on, obviously, because Brett Goldstein is involved in the writing as well. Um, oh, sorry, on that mm-hmm. watched shrinking. I've just finished it. Okay. Sorry. That's Hurry another on. one to add. <laughs> yeah. But um there is occasionally I think that they get the references a bit wrong like there was one episode where they all, they all referenced norm mcdonald and i went mm, i don't think most british people know who norm mcdonald is i do but i don't think generally speaking a bunch of yeah. footballers would know norm mcdonald you know so occasionally the references aren't spot on norm mcdonald wasn't he from saturday night live it was wasn't he indeed, the voice yes. of in the orville he's the voice yes. of was he's the, the, yes correct he passed green. away didn't he he yes, passed correct. away last year yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I suspect that's why they put it in, because I, I imagine Jason Sudeikis know, knew him personally. Yeah. So that's probably why they put it in. But, but um, what was the name of that character in the Orville? It begins with an S. He's Yafet. Oh. Yafet. Yafet. That doesn't begin with an S. I know. I was There's wrong. no S in it. <laughs> Never trust me when I say it begins with an S. <laughs> yeah, so it begins with an S, so Fred, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, right, shall we press play? Yeah. Okay, play. Yeah. Announcer is speaking Dutch. Yeah. 
five nil. Oh yeah, Go Zava, why bother? Oh. Okay, I was surprised it started though. I thought it was going to be the build up of them going and then the whole yeah, no, the bang. I didn't realize it's like yeah. Gotta be alright. <laughs> I think I saw her in um, Spamalot years ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, possibly. She was the Lady of the Lake. Yes. With um, Tim Curry. Oh, nice. Oh, what are they all going to do? Leslie's going to the Red Legs District. Z? <laughs> 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 Oh, Roy and Keely. <laughs> Play some. I do love that line he says in the second season when he goes, You deserve someone that makes you feel like you've been struck by effing lightning. Yes, exactly. He's, um, I, I, last week's, you know, um, Keely and Jack getting together was very confusing for the uh, internet fans because. Always internet fans love a bit of women and women love. Yeah. Uh, but then, of course, it's like, oh, no, but we want Roy and Keely back together. So it's very, it's fun for yeah. Keely, but it's a very, feel... very torn dynamic. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it is. Hopefully, they'll be end game. <laughs> no curfew tonight. Woo! I don't want to see your pretty faces until we get back on this bus. And what time, Coach? It's an end of it. You're the man, 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Let loose in Amsterdam. Or street blues. It's like, what? <laughs> oh, well, Will seems very sweet. He it? does. Even if he doesn't know what a CD is. I saw you walking just there and I thought I have to say something to this beautiful woman. Oh, you're not going to be able to talk to me. There we go. Upside down in water. Ted. Oh. Inviting Rebecca out. This isn't going to be like a... Oh. oh my God, I forgot his name. After hours. Beard after hours. Beard after hours. So well, maybe... <laughs> well, I'm dying to see what Higgins got going on in the red light district. <laughs> Do you think they're going to spend all night in the hotel lobby and not go anyplace? Because they can't agree. Uh, so it's all about jazz for Higgins. It's going to be really riveting listen for people what like that what. It's like it's yeah. nothing of it's just no, we'll just all the way through. We'll skip the most of it. We'll get to the end of it. Yeah, we watched it, but we just were engrossed, so we didn't speak yeah. that much. <laughs> Until we've seen the whole episode, there's not yeah, a lot have to, to do, see. do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now he's going to drink. Hey, are you going to drink the beer of hallucinogens? James Lance, he was one of the first uh, Joe's boyfriends on uh, The Upper Hand. Was he? Yep, he was the one that came when she was babysitting, you know, remember, and tried to unblock the sink. What, Trent? That was Trent Krim, yep. No way! Oh, that should be what? Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Now I feel really old. <laughs> Hello. Oh, poor Ted keeps messaging Rebecca and she's not answering because she doesn't have her phone. She's doing Amsterdam as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Jamie knows so much about Amsterdam. Bless him. She's like so young there, doesn't she? It's, that dress just, I don't know, it's made her look, 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 she didn't look feminine before, but it's a really girly yeah, look for it's her. It's very soft, it's a very soft look. She's normally very... You know, Wait, put together some... rock hard. Kind of. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one true ship from the show, isn't it? <laughs> Roy and Jamie. They really, uh, the progression's been brilliant with. It has. 
Jamie especially, he's really, yes. from the first season, he's really... <laughs> So you could never imagine this in season one. I know, exactly. <laughs> See, Jamie can be sweet. <laughs> yeah, Jamie is, yes, inherently very sweet. He's relearning his bad ways. <laughs> Isn't that the one he had in the office with Rebecca that is sunset? Oh, I don't remember. See, that's... <laughs> oh, aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> Will's gone in Ryla. He was she was just snugging the other bloke at the other table. I know. Well, you know, Sam so down. Online, the little boy singing this. Yeah, adorable. So cute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've got to believe the world's going to be okay when you see him singing that. I know. It's just oh, it's so oh, it's just lovely. Oh. 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 Oh.
But look how much Rebecca's changed because she exactly. was literally all her focus was destroying the club and destroying Rupert. Yeah. But now yeah. she's like, she's on a different journey and it's she's a completely different. But then it's like what Sassy said, it's like, this isn't the Rebecca that I know. So maybe yes. this was the Rebecca she knows. She's finally this coming is, back yes. to herself. Yeah. And, um, yes, it could sorry. be the opposite of a building block in that it's stripping away all the things that Rebecca had built up while she was with Rupert. So yeah. this is reminding her of who she was and what she wants is that same, that I can't pronounce it, feeling, zealot, um, of, you know, coziness of home, of being killed with someone, you know, having someone. Yeah. And I think, I think that's very clear is that it's going to be, she's going to have someone, but at this point... It's stab- in- she's re-establishing her worth. Yeah, because she said in the funeral episode, she was saying about how lonely she was when she first broke up with Richard and how scary. Yeah, but I, I think because she had that fling with a guy off one of the dating apps, and then she had um, the relationship with Sam, which was obviously a bit more serious. Yeah, but now this guy as well, it's like it's kind of reaffirming to her that you know what, I am worth it. I am attracted to the, attractive to these people. I am yeah worth this. So she. It's rebuilding that confidence to her, which I think after Rupert, she, and especially after when Be- Be- Bex had the, Becca, whatever her name, had the baby. Yeah. yeah. That kind of knocked her for six. So I think this is just really start building up her confidence to be in a place where you think, actually, do you know what? Because she said that she was, when she, what did she write in her profile? Oh, oh that she's shit scared or whatever it was, something like that. Yeah. And it's like, she's just getting to that point where she thinks, actually, do you know what? I can building up to that point where she could be in something to something for the long haul, which is why maybe they've stood kept Ted away from that until Yeah. But even Ted in this episode was a bit at the beginning. It was like he was really quite lost, wasn't he, when he was yes. talking to Beard. And yeah. I, I'm interested to see where that he that character pans out. I mean it's we've got to what we're halfway through now, is that six episodes yeah. down, six to go. And and they're like they've gone from like half an hour. So I think that was sixty three minutes or something, oh, wow. wasn't it? That episode. Yes. <laughs> I'm not complaining. It's like no, no. so basically it's like double the length of the last series if it's going to carry on like that. What they've done is they've put so many different like um lines in the water. You know what I mean? Because with Ted two episodes ago or whatever it was the episodes ago, you know, speaking to his wife and telling his ex-wife that he still mm. loved her and, and people are like, oh, gonna get back together with his wife. And then it's like, oh no, is he gonna get together with Sassy? Oh no, is he gonna get but- together with you know, it's like they, I, they've really just put lots of things in the water and we don't know yet what line is going to end up. Yeah, well, Sassy's like, the line with Sassy, I think, is yeah. she's said as much. Yes. It's like, it's like I'm, I'm a, what's it, I'm a progress or something. Progress, Work, working yes. progress. <laughs> I want to get that on a progress. t-shirt. Uh, working progress. <laughs> and, um, and I think... She, he's always going to say, I love you to his ex-wife. Because yeah. they were together for years. She's the mother of his child. They're always going to have that relationship. And it might not be a romantic love anymore, but I think he, no. that's always, he's always going to say that to her, even if it's... And, and that's what he was saying, was we're always going to be a family. We're always going to be connected and, you know... And, and she's and, dating the therapist now anyway. Yeah, so exactly. She's the, when they, Last week, she was still dating the, the Dr. Lucas. Uh, so I don't think yeah. that's... But I think it's. I think they're doing this deliberately. Is they're playing lots of different angles that make people but, not sure what's going to happen. You know, when, when you know in that episode when we see Ted looking at, he's looking at people speaking to each other, couples. You know, not necessarily romantic couples, but just everybody had someone. And mm-hmm. um, I think he's. You know, he's he's uh, without beard there. He was missing his someone. Not that I'm saying beard was his one person, but you know. That connection, and and but I did think this episode is showing that he's he is in the right place. There was a lot of talk that maybe he would go back to America. You know, he was mentioning it that he should leave. But with think, that conversation he had in the in the sunflower, um, the, in front of the sunflower, is about you know, know when you know where you're meant to be and doing what you're meant to be doing. And so mm. I think that's Ted realising he is where he is meant to be. Well, I think the, the question is how much did he really, was the bloke really saying that? Or was that just what Ted was hearing because he'd had yeah. the, the tea, you know? Um, we don't know how much was actually real and how much wasn't. Uh, so it's one of those 
you know, he, because like you say, it's a bit deep for a, a tour guide to be, to be talking yeah. about that kind of thing. Let's just give him the notebook. It's like, oh, actually, no, you can buy these. It said £10.50 and they <laughs> shop yeah. on your way out. It's like... He's, it's no longer... Um, what do you call it? It's the Van Gogh's no longer in copyright, so you can print all of his, his, uh, his stuff for free if you like. So. <laughs> See, wouldn't it have been interesting if it was a green matchbook? with? That's exactly what I was thinking. It was just, I was like, oh, man, if that had been a green one, then I would have been like, oh, it's the green matchbook. But do you know what? And also, she was not upside down. She might have been wet, but she was not upside down. <laughs> well, she went upside down. She did down, dive in head first, I suppose. So, yeah. <laughs> So the only thing we have that we haven't necessarily had is thunder and lightning and you're going to have a family, you're going to be a mother. So so that's the... So she did sleep with him then? Well, I, th- I think that was the implication, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the way Why would she... he just say no? Why would he just... I yeah, know. I don't know. So she, she could leave without feeling bad, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think she was that drunk, to be honest. But <laughs> She certainly wasn't that hungover. So. No, she wasn't. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to think of the, the ways she could be a mother. We could have her, she's with Ted and she's a stepmother to Ted's little yeah. boy. She could adopt. Yes, she could adopt on her own. She could take in uh, uh, the other vet. Becca and, and Joan. Her, yeah, and, and Rupert's daughter, Joan? or Diane. I don't know where Joan came from. No, that's Diana. Of horses. <laughs> Bex and Diana, she maybe could take them in because Rupert. they'll find out Rupert's cheating on her and uh, she takes them in. I don't know. Uh, she could get pregnant by a mystery guy. So there's so many avenues for how this is going to come about. Mm. It's very hard to, to see. They really are making it not obvious, you know, keeping it in... <laughs> in, in but I like how it's developing. I like that we saw a change, you know, that, that Ted was desperately trying to get in contact with her the whole episode, you know, and the 12 texts and then admitting to it. It's like, yeah. why did someone upset you? Oh, bless you, Ted. You're so lovely. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll see what happens with Ted and Rebecca. I don't know. Yeah, so we'd have to do a recap after the yes. final episode is. I know they keep saying that it's going to be three episodes, but I think what should happen is that they should get to the in the top of the league and which means they'll go into Europe yeah. and then that's the next season they go into <laughs> Europe in the European <laughs> league or whatever it is I don't know football but I don't so <laughs> or they get some of the couple of the players go to the World Cup or something I don't know yeah and I have to say though I'm glad I it wasn't really I've had until I got this since I started watching Ted Lasso I'd never really had Apple before mm. so I don't know how long they've been doing the one episode a week thing like Disney have yeah. And then Netflix is all about the drop everything all in one go. Yes. I'm so glad they haven't done this. Yeah. Because I actually, it's like it worked today. I was thinking, oh, I'm going to watch Ted Lasso then. You yes. get, I mean, when you get have a show you really like, you don't get, if you go and binge something, yeah. it's like, okay, well, all that build up is just gone. And it like, yes. and it's, I like the fact that you can savor this. And over the course of the next week, people can have that. It's, it, it's bringing the water cooler moments back. Yeah. And, and all, yeah, I just like the fact it just stretches it. I mean, we've got 12 weeks now of this, mm-hmm. as opposed to, I watched it all in two days. It's done and dusted, and you move on to the next thing. I mean, fair enough, I did binge the first two seasons. Yes. But I do <laughs> like the way that the new, I do like the episode per week strategy. I, th- I think it's much better for shipped. I really do, because you're, it gives you that space to speculate and enjoy and it, it allows fans to be much more creative because you've got that mm. gap to fill you know where you go oh next week they're going to Amsterdam so people will write fan fiction spe- you yeah. know imagining what could happen in I mean Amsterdam. just out of curiosity right because I mean fan fiction has gone well we know fan fiction has gone nuts it's like yeah. so if I just type in archive of our own and just yeah. see like how many fan fics there are mm-hmm. I mean and it'll be interesting Brilliant. to see how many there are now, like how many are at the end of the season, like see how many has been added yes. in that time. 4,634, if you type okay. into that, how many yeah. come up and like, 
doing it weekly allows that room for the fandom to build in a way that it just doesn't when you drop it all at once. You don't have that anticipation. You don't have that time thinking, oh, what's going to happen between these two characters? Because if you wait an hour, you can watch it and find out. You know, you'll see the next two episodes. Yeah. Is this because to wait? Pause it, have a wee, make a cup of tea and carry on again. It's like... <laughs> yeah. And I mean, we both say this as people who binge. We, we binge. I would rather not binge. If I, I, I binge because I'm weak. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I, I like I say with season one and two, I binged it because it was that good view, that good view. Yeah, it did entice me in, but yeah, it's given the you say given the choice. Yes, I'd like having that anticipation, but then I don't know. I like that I was able to watch the first series all in one go because it yeah. really brought me. As I knew if I'd watched it one episode a week, but the would it have had the same impact? I don't know. I would like to well, think that's, so. It's interesting. I do think there are some shows I've seen where you definitely need more than one episode to get into yeah. it. You definitely need, you know, two or three. So what um what Amazon is doing is quite good. They're dropping three episodes, then two episodes, then three episodes. And I quite like that way of doing it because I think you do need that little group at the start of episodes to get you into the characters to care about them the mm. situation and then you know then do yeah, it I, I think i'm not 100 percent sure but i think with the latest season of schmigadoon they watch they drop two yeah and then it's one a week oh so we, I do, uh, they have started advertising on the radio for the next season of only murders in the building yep that should be coming up soon yep and we're um with we're meryl Yep, we're in the middle of um, the last series of Succession. <laughs> Come on, Gary! Still not watch that. Day. That's another one you got, got into late, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That that I I needed to binge that. I would not have cared enough about the characters in season one if I didn't know what happened with Roman and Jerry in season two. See, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I. It's like you say, I so sometimes it does pay to have that does, binge option. Yeah. I mean, that's maybe but more about hindsight than binging, if you know what I mean. You know, at only a certain see, point in the characters. See, that's in, again, it's like, it makes you wonder that if a lot of the shows, like, say, on Netflix, had aired on network mm-hmm. broadcast television as one episode per week, would they have been that successful? Would you have stayed with, like, Bridgerton or Stranger Things if it was one episode a week See, on was, the main I was, channel? It's I was, I with think, adverts. <laughs> I think some of them definitely would. I, I was just thinking about Stranger Things. You know, Stranger Things, especially the most recent season, was a cultural phenomenon. You know, what, what happened with Running Up That Hill showed you. But if that had been weekly, I think it would have been even bigger because it was such a mystery kind of show. You know, what's going to happen? Who's going to die? Who's going to, you know... I haven't watched the latest season, but oh. they split it, didn't they? So that kind yeah, of is left people hanging a little bit. Yes, and... exactly. So they kind of had the best of both worlds. But it was so tense and scary. It's a very scary season. Um, and it's really, really builds on that week on week. So I think it would have worked, definitely. But I think there are some shows that don't work. That it, They're too forgettable. You know, if you're watching them week on week, you watch an episode and then you just kind of forget watch the it's next like, I've watched... I mean, I did watch Virgin River. That was okay. And then I think I watched Firefly Lane. And I oh, watched yes. the odd season and where I've watched the entire series. And I watched watched Dead to Me. I haven't even watched season three yet. I can't, no. but I can vaguely remember what happened in season one and two. Yeah. yeah. I know I really liked it. and then, But it was so like, ages ago and I'm thinking, oh. But I think if I'd have had that week, week on yeah. week thing, it keeps it in your memory longer, does it? I don't know. Does, does it yeah. get you more invested? So yeah. when it does come back again, are you more inclined to watch it? It's an interesting psychological I think about that. That's my dissertation. It's like <laughs> psychology of binge. <laughs> it allows you to digest each episode. Because if you watch them all in one go, it's like me and Hacks. I really enjoyed Hacks. But both seasons, I watched each season in a day. And I cannot remember what happened. Because you take in so much information in a short period of time and it all just becomes a melange in your brain of what happened. Whereas if yeah. you watch one episode, and sometimes, you know, if it's really good, like the Ted Lasso, you watch it more than once, that gives you a chance to really absorb that episode before you go on to the next one. And then, you know, so I think it's better for the show to do that. I think it, it allows you to enjoy the material more and gives you more room 
to appreciate it. Instead of, I think when you bend your whole series, or, you know, I don't mean personally, I mean when the audience binges a whole series, they pick out certain moments that are brilliant and all the rest of it kind of gets lost. Yeah. You, you know, it just because it's only the highlights that people remember. Whereas if you're watching it week on week, you remember a lot more of the details. So, yeah, I, I would definitely choose it. If I could choose it, I would choose week, weekly drop, definitely. I think so. Because I like that like excitement you get about watching. Oh, that shows yeah. up tonight. Oh, go home and yes. watch, I can go home and watch this. And exactly, oh, it's just like, uh, and, and, and I get that weekly. As opposed to it's like, oh, it's new. Oh, the whole season drops today, and then you've watched it, and it's like, well, that's a bit of an anticlimax. So it's like, yes. Yeah. And you feel like oh, you've binged it all, and it's like, oh, I should have saved. And then you watch it all, and then when it finishes, you think you regret it. You think, oh, I wish I'd savoured that. Yeah, I wish I had watched them all in one go. And it's like, well, that's made that choice for you. And it's yeah. some ways, I- like you say, that it's better. So I mean, it's just, and like, and all those clips have been on YouTube and Twitter and yeah, exactly Instagram and I mean, I don't go out looking for them. It's just I sometimes you just stumble across them because like yeah. the stuff you've watched in the past. But if you want to be part of that fandom, you want to see that content exactly. Content. Yeah, but then oh, at the same time, you're gonna be spoiled. So yeah. when it's like tonight, I mean, we watched that. Well, I did. I watched that episode of Ted Lasso completely <laughs> cold. I yeah. all I knew about that episode was that they'd gone to Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. That was it. I knew nothing else up about that. And it's yeah. and so like you, I, I like going into something not knowing what's going to happen. Yeah. Although, but saying that back in the day, I did used to go online and read all the extra scripts before they do in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I did it's absolutely like, everything you could for the X Files. I was part of I, that website, so uh, yeah. We used I remember to get going feed. into uni because I didn't have the internet at home because this was this was like what 1999 I think it was mm-hmm. going into uni going into the computer room and going online to find and I remember reading the script in the computer room of um triangle yeah and thinking that that like, the bit of the kid says they end up like oh, when's this on in the year and then literally I think I yeah. watched it I think I've got about bloody six months for this now <laughs> and then I had to get my friend to tape it because I didn't have sky <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Yeah, it was the satellite feed that was sent in the middle of the night uh, on a Saturday night, and it would Sunday morning somebody would put this the transcript of it, and I rem- I vividly remember the, the morning of of uh, requiem and Scully scrolling down to the words "I'm pregnant," and everybody was See, like, oh. "I I was a year after that. I remember of discovering this literally at the end of when she has William." Oh yeah, and I remember uh, seeing that bit with it, like when Boulder goes, and I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's all not completely memory. adverse to spoilers no. I think everywhere it's like I think we discussed this before when we did that episode which you can go back and listen to by the way people we, there is an episode all about spoilers um it's preference even it I mean it's not even individual person preference it's that person could it could be stu- I mean I don't want to be spoiled about certain things but other things like yeah whatever just tell me yeah, I don't care exactly yeah if, I mean that's the thing for shippers you're like oh hang on this episode is, is I, I want to know I think a lot of it is about trust if you trust that the writers are going to do something good you know that's you know and I think that's how we feel most people feel about Ted Lasso is yeah. that whatever they do we kind of trust you know if they don't get them together it's fine but there are other shows where you're like I don't trust them I want to know as far enough in advance prepare myself emotionally for what they're going yeah. to do you know you want to have a trust in your the writers yes absolutely. you want to think you and i think Ted Lasso has proved by we like we said earlier with all the callbacks and everything mm-hmm. they know where this is going i think they yeah. had the plan from day one it's like when they started filming okay this is where we're going to end up yeah and at least i want to believe that it's like yeah. I, I, I want to believe that i believe i believe, I believe. <laughs> Well, thank you for listening if you did. And uh, always remember to um, you can check us out on these socials. We are on um, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And, what you and so, yes, we have been very sporadic the last year, but bear with us. Later this year, we will be having a complete relaunch. Yeah. And um, we'll probably maybe review, do, do an episode where we just look back at the last US TV season and discuss all of the last Everything. 12 months and just discuss ships because that's yeah. what we do that's exactly. what we, we that's how we roll that's how and we then, sail yes. do you see what i did there uh, <laughs> on, right. that, on that note i think it's time for us to go yeah. <laughs> okay oh uh, subscribe like share do all the things comment and we will be back with you very soon okay, okay bye. thank you very much bye bye